Hey everybody, Dr. Retzig here with you again. This is our video for section 14.2 in the book. And 14.2 is all about limits. Remember, in chapter 14, what we're trying to do is redo Calc 1, only we're trying to redo it for functions of several variables. So let's remember what limits were all about in Calc 1 before we look at a couple examples here in Calc 4. So in the olden days, the picture was always like this. You had a good old XY coordinate system, and then you have some sort of function graph like that, say maybe that's Y equals F of X. And if you were interested in the limit as X approaches A for that function, then in that picture, you'd be happy to say the limit as X gets close to A of the function F of X is L. So the picture is really pleasing. You look at it and you say, yeah, if you plug X values closer and closer to A into this function, then you get output values closer and closer to L. Now, this picture is the simplest possible case. This is where the function f is actually continuous at the point A, meaning the value right at A agrees with the limit as you approach A. So in that drawing, L is equal to f of A. Contrast that with this picture. So good old XY coordinate system again. Almost exact same function. So that's Y equals F of X. Only this time there's a hole at A. And maybe the value right at A is up there. Now we're still happy to say that the limit in this picture as x approaches a of f of x is l. It's still true as you plug in inputs closer and closer and closer to a. From either side, the answers, the outputs, get closer and closer to l. Still true. But what's no longer true is that L agrees with the value of the function right at A. The value of the function right at A is different from the limit. So this function is not continuous. So back in the day, we used limits to decide if functions are continuous or not. Continuity just meant value right at the point agrees with limit as you approach the point. So that was the story back in Calc 1. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to try to retell that story here in Calc 4. The functions involved in today's discussion are just going to be functions of two variables, but the leap from one variable to several variables is pretty much encapsulated by the leap from one variable to two variables. So let's look at an example. Okay, so here's our first example. Let's consider the function f of x, y equals, and now it's a big ratio, so the numerator, let's have that be x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, and let's have the denominator be x minus y. All right, so this is a function of two variables. You plug in an x comma y, it will spit out some answer. Now, no one knows just with their eyes what the graph of such a thing looks like. It's probably some complicated flying carpet, or if it's not complicated, it's certainly in disguise at the moment. You're not supposed to look at this and think, oh yeah, I can totally picture that. No one can do that. Now you are supposed to look at this though and say, oh, okay, 
I can plug in any x comma y that I want as long as x and y are not the same. So we can draw the domain. So the picture we're about to draw isn't the graph of the flying carpet. It's just a picture of what x comma y's are plug-inable. So if you're trying to think about the domain and you want to produce a picture, well, consider the x y plane and look back at the formula and note that the only issue that could possibly arise for this function is when x equals y because then the denominator is zero. So we have to exclude all points where x and y agree from the domain. So that line right there, that's the line y equals x and any point on that line is not in the domain of the function. Now the rest of the function is fine at any other point. So all this out here, all this is the domain. You can plug in anything you want as long as it's not on y equals x. Okay, let's think about how this function behaves as you approach the point 1, 1. Now pause for a moment. If you're feeling like, wait, I thought you said 1, 1's not in the domain. Oh, we did. 1, 1 is not in the domain. But you see how you can get closer and closer and closer to 1, 1 without leaving the domain? There's lots of ways to march towards that point without leaving the domain. In fact, I can draw a few here in red. Think about all the different paths towards that point. There's this kind of boring path towards 1, 1. There's that path. There's this funky curly Q path. You can march towards that point in infinitely many different ways. And what we're trying to decide is well, however you're marching towards that point, is the function well behaved? What's the value of this function as you get closer and closer to one? Okay, so we are interested in computing this limit. Let's compute the limit as x comma y approaches one, one. So look at that funky new notation because now inputs are already ordered pairs of our function f of x, y. Those are the instructions. We're going to try to compute that limit. Okay, well, let's write out what we're really looking at here. We're looking at the limit as x, y approaches 1, 1 of our function f of x, y. The formula was here, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. All over x minus y. Now, our first inclination might be to just, well, set x equal to 1 and y equal to 1 and see what we get. But immediately you see that's just not a viable path. If you set x and y both equal to 1, then this thing looks like 0 over 0. But then you hear zero over zero and you're like, oh sweet, low talls, but wait. We don't have low talls for functions of two variables, at least not at the moment, maybe not ever, but certainly not now. This is the very beginning of our journey with functions of more than one variable. So there's no such thing as low talls as far as we're concerned at this moment. Now back in the day, in Calc 1, when you were having issues because the denominator was zero in some limit, Sometimes the numerator factored and you could cancel and that denominator was really not as troublesome as it first appeared. And that's actually what's happening here. Let's factor the numerator. So this is the limit as x, y approaches 1, 1. And the numerator is really x minus y times x minus y. If you FOIL that out, you get the original numerator, and this is still all over x minus y. 
And now the beauty with limits is you're never saying x comma y is actually equal to one one. It's just really, really close. You're marching along one of these red paths closer and closer to one one. But you never get there when you consider the limit. And so x minus y isn't literally zero, it's just tiny. Therefore, we are free to cancel top and bottom. And we find, oh, we really just have to do this limit. As x, y goes to 1, 1 of, uh, oh, just x minus y. Now, as x, y approaches 1, 1, x itself approaches 1 and y itself approaches 1, and so their difference approaches 0. And so in this example, we found that the limit did exist and comes out to 0. Fantastic. So though this function is not defined at 1, 1, if you march closer and closer towards 1, 1, the values, the outputs, the f of x, y's march closer and closer to zero. All right, so there's algebra involved when you're computing limits, just like there was back in the day. It's just a little more complicated because there's more than one variable. But at least on this one, the limit came out just fine. The limit was zero. All right, let's consider a second example which illustrates something a little more sinister. So the second and final example in this intro to 14.2 starts out quite the same. We're gonna consider a function of two variables here. This time the function is uh, x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus y squared. Again, I think the first order of business is to figure out the domain of this thing. Let's think about all possible x comma y's that we're allowed to plug in. So what spots in the x, y plane are we allowed to plug in? And you can see, really, any x comma y is legit except for the origin. So in this picture, the domain is everything except for the origin. So all this out here, all this is good. This is all domain. Everything's fine except at the origin. All right. So unsurprisingly, we might be asked to consider, well, what happens as you approach the origin? I know you can't actually go there, but when you get close to zero, zero, how does this function behave? So our objective this time is to consider the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of our function x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus y squared. That's our task. Now here's the thing about limits. Just like back in the day, you're only willing to say the limit exists if it comes out the same, no matter how you approach the limit point. So we have to know that on any path towards the origin, this function behaves the same way in order to declare the limit to exist. Put another way, if we found two different paths towards the origin on which the function behaved differently, then we would declare the limit to not exist. So let's start tinkering around with paths. Let's think about different ways to approach the origin. So I'll do paths in red. Uh, what if we cruised in towards the origin like, like this, say? What if we just marched in towards the origin uh, along the negative x-axis? So we're just cruising in and we want to see what this function gets closer and closer to as we approach the origin on that path. Now, observe that on that path, y is constantly zero. So if you're gonna call this path number one, I think it's fair to say that on path number one,
on path one, we're really doing this limit. Limit as x comma zero approaches zero, zero. And when y is zero, note that our function is simply x to the fourth over x to the fourth. And so that limit is easily seen to be one. All right, consider a different path though. How about, how about on this path? How about the red path cruising down the y-axis? So what if we cruised towards zero, marching down the positive y-axis? And we call that path two. All right, well on path two, it looks like we're considering the limit as zero comma y approaches the origin, zero, zero. And when x is zero, look at our function. Zero over zero plus y squared. which is zero. So on path two, the function approaches zero as you approach the origin, but on path one, the function approaches one as you approach the origin. So the limit as you approach the origin on whatever path does not exist because two separate paths gave two separate values. All right, I have a challenge for you to end this intro. to 14.2. Here's a challenge in this example. Uh, find a path three on which the function approaches a half. So yet a third path that disagrees with both the first two. In any case, this function definitely does not have a limit as x comma y approaches zero, zero, because it seems like the behavior of the function depends on the path you take. And that's really the gist in section 14.2. Limits in this new, more exciting Calc 4 land can be a little more subtle, a little more delicate, and require a little more careful analysis. All right, that should be a good start to get you guys going in 14.2. Look at those suggested problems and be ready to discuss 14.2 on Friday. Bye.